morning, guys. Uh, welcome. Good morning. Uh, today we are going to start with the other fascinating chapter is fuel system. Uh, fuel system in diesel is critical. The secret in a diesel engine is the quality of the diesel, the quality of the fuel. And uh, in this chapter, we are going to, to talk about the different type of uh, injection systems, the different type of fuels, uh, especially we are going to talk about the biodiesel. Later, we are going to talk with more details about the properties of uh, diesel. Uh, diesel uh, only ignites if uh, you spray that fuel in a, in a container with high pressure and high temperature. That's the only way to ignite a diesel. No, with a spar, with, no, no, no. Oh, let me I mix it, a, a diesel with a little gasoline or a, a, no, my friend. Immediately, the diesel lose the properties and never ignite again. No? The maximum that is demonstrated that you can mix it is, uh, is 10% of ethanol. And, 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 and diesel don't lose the properties. This is why you see in some gas station B10, B15, B is 10% of methanol, or ethanol. But later we are going to talk about that. Okay, in other words, the secret to ignite diesel is the pressure, the compression. If the diesel engine have low compression, what happened? When the fuel enter, when the fuel enter in the combustion chamber, ignite? No. No, because the pressure is below 400 PSI, something like this, never ignite. And uh, if the temperature is below uh, 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, should be both, both, both parameters, pressure and temperature. If not, the fuel enter and goes out, and you see fuel coming out through the exhaust pipe. Yes, my friend, this is, uh, this is the, the secret of diesel. This is why uh, we are going to divide the fuel injection system, the fuel systems, in two sections, the high pressure side and the low pressure side. Uh, where is located the low pressure side? Okay, the low pressure side is located in between the tank, passing through the transfer pump, the water separators, the, the, the priming pump or lifting pump, and the secondary filter, at the input of the fuel injection pump. Okay, in between the input of the fuel injection pump and the fuel tank, I have the low pressure side. What is the pressure of the low pressure side? Max 20 PSI. Yeah, 15 PSI, yeah, it's low pressure side. What about the high pressure side? The high pressure side is in between the fuel injection pump, in between the output of the fuel injection pump and the injector, with highest, 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 ultra highest pressure. Okay, low pressure side, low pressure side in between the fuel tank, water separator, transfer pump, this is the transfer pump, secondary filter, and the input of the fuel injection pump. In between this point and the fuel tank, I have low pressure side. Ah, in between the output of the fuel injection pump and the injectors, I have high pressure side. Guys, at the input of the fuel injection pump here, 15 PSI. In the output of the fuel injection pump through the injectors, more than 1,000 PSI. 17,000, yeah? It's ultra high pressure in the output, low pressure in the input. Okay, uh, what is this, guys? Look at this. The, the, the fuel at high pressure goes into the injector and some fuel return into the fuel tank. This is the return line. How much fuel return normally, in normal condition? 80%. 80%. Only 20% of the fuel enter in the combustion chamber to produce to produce energy, to produce torque. And the other 80% return. I have a question. What happens when the fuel is coming at low pressure and enter in the fuel injection pump? No, no problem. It's low pressure, low temperature. Uh, what happens when the, the fuel goes out through the fuel injection pump and enter in the injector? What happens with the temperature of the fuel? It's increasing. Increase dramatically. Yeah. Dramatically. Ah, only 20% of that fuel at high pressure and high temperature enter in the combustion chamber. The other 80% return into the fuel tank. What happened in a typical diesel engine after 20 minutes of operation uh, with the temperature of the fuel tank? The fuel tank is hot because, because the fuel is circulating, is circulating. This is why 
Normally, the recommendation is the heat exchanger to reduce the temperature of the fuel. In some cases, the heat exchanger is located in one part of this site or in some part of the re of the return, depend of the manufacturer. But you need you need a heat exchanger. Okay, uh, it's clear that picture, guys, about the the separation in between the low pressure site and the high pressure site uh, in diesel. Let me explain something, guys. Here, at the input of the fuel injection pump, is located a a solenoid to allow that the fuel enter or not in the fuel injection pump. In other words, that solenoid is able to start or stop the engine. This is why that solenoid is also called a start-stop solenoid. Look at this. It's this solenoid. And this solenoid extends to stop or retract to open and allow that the fuel enter. That solenoid that solenoid, after the break, we bring 12 volts, extend and retract here with power coming from? Ignition. From preheat, from ignition. When you apply preheat, when you apply preheat, immediately this element extend, open, and the fuel enter, and the engine is running. If that solenoid, the start and stop solenoid, if this solenoid, is closed, the engine is off. For that reason, some manufacturers, they call this solenoid a start stop. Don't forget, this is other of the symptoms. You receive a phone call and the phone call says, uh, my engine is cranking, 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 and no start. What is the recommendation for your future customers when you receive a phone call and the people say, it's cranking, cranking. Recommendation number one, don't crank. No more. Because it's possible that you suction salt water and you block the engine. We are going to identify why the engine is not starting. <coughs> For what reason? Okay, how can you verify that? Uh, if you have a spray, starting fluid, you can crank a little, you apply, a oh, a start immediately. Okay, it's fuel. For sure, it's your solenoid. No, in my engine, I don't have solenoid. Hey, my friend, you have a diesel engine, you have solenoid. How can I know where it's located? Mm, let me check this engine, this engine, this engine. Oh, look, this is the fuel injection pump. This is the solenoid. And, 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 this is the cable. This is the cable to activate that solenoid. The power normally is, is, Purple, the because it's coming from ignition. ignition. It's coming from ignition, ignition or preheat. Remember, in diesel engines, you have a, a three buttons: one button for stop, preheat, and start. In some cases, the button is combined: the start, stop, preheat, and start. Okay, guys, be careful with the lines of the high pressure side, guys. Those lines. The lines of the high pressure side where the injector is located here and the fuel injection pump here, try to bend with your hand. That's impossible. Other important thing, guys, pay attention. This is the line for injector number one. This is the line for injector number two. And this is the line for injector number three. The length of this, this and this should be the same. The same. This is why this one have a, and, and this one is a straight practically. But the land, if you extend it, those lines are identical. If you modify that land, what happened? The timing is affected. The timing is affected if you change the land of those uh, lines. Normally, in a small engines, in a small engines, you only have one water separator, like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, other element that uh, uh, is uh, very important is this. Be careful because uh, this is the transfer pump that normally is electrical, like this, 12 volts, you see? Or 24 volts, depending on the engine. And it's activated from? From? Ignition. At the same time, yeah. then the? Start, stop. Start, solenoid. stop, solenoid, you activate that pump. Ah, in other words, when, uh, when you stop the engine, or when you kill the engine for emergency, this solenoid and this pump are off. 
Uh, you remember uh, two ways that uh, the engine the engine stop automatically. One case is if oil pressure switch and coolant, coolant temperature switch, no sensor, the switches. Switch. Ah, those switches are in series with this cable and this cable. Okay. The cable for the solenoid and the cable for the fuel, pump. The fuel transfer pump. Ah, when those switches open, they are normally closed, you remember? Right. When they open, what happened? It kills the power to that. And this, off, and the engine stopped immediately. That's the process to stop the engine. 